Hi, I'm Paul Brody. I'm here with Mitch. He operates the camera and this is my shop. Welcome. Our project today is a head tube hauling fixture. This is one here. There's an older one over here. I'll show you quickly how it works. Here's a head tube, inch and eighth head tube. Put that over. A second cone here. And then there's a clamp. Now you notice that on the clamp and the second taper here, there's a ramp and each of these ramps matches. So you put this on, you lock it, and then you twist it and that really <clears throat> locks in the head tube there. What's going on with this, it works on an inch and an eighth head tube, but for larger head tubes like a Paragon 44 millimeter, it's too small. So I've got some metal here, it's DOM, it's drawn over mandrel, that means it's seamless tubing. We're gonna make a couple larger cones here. So this one here, we have to undo the weld, we have to take this off, make, make the cone, put it back on there, do a little weld. This one's a little bit more involved because it also has to have a ramp going down. We're going to do that on the mill using the rotary table and the digital readout. First step is to go to the lathe, machine this down a little bit, file the weld, press this off. Let's go. I don't have to machine off the whole thing, but I'm going to take cuts going back maybe a quarter of an inch and I'm going to go really close uh, to this inch rod, but not into the rod. I have to be careful. Okay, I'm very, very close. I think what I'll do now is I'll file off the weld and then we'll go to the arbor press and we'll press the shaft out from the taper. Seems like every video we do, I end up doing some filing. Uh, the press. Oh, it's coming out really easy. So I don't, hardly even need the upper press. There we go. Okay, then, okay, that's our shaft. We'll go to the lathe with this one and we'll, we're going to make a taper. Now what we're going to do is to move the compound. This is, this is the compound. We have to loosen off the bolts or the nuts on either side and turn it at an angle. It's a 20 degree taper, so I'm going to get my protractor out and we'll set it up. There you go, there's my 20. Right there. I'm just eyeballing it. If it's off a degree, it's okay. Okay, I like that right there. Make it tight. That looks okay. It's not absolutely perfect, but it's smooth. I have to put a handle on it as well. So what I'm doing for that, I've got a piece of, <clears throat> I've got a, a, a 3 8 bolt. So after we make, make the cone, we're gonna put it in the mill. We're gonna drill a hole. We're gonna tap a thread. I'll cut it off, lock tight it in there, make it really tight with the hex and then we'll cut it to length so it'll be like that. That's basically how it's gonna be, except on, on the larger one. So let's go back to the lathe. I have to do this whole process once again, but it doesn't take that long. Off to the mill now. We're going to use the mill like a drill press. We'll start out with a center drill. It's short and stubby, no flex. So 
So that's the tap drill. So what I could do now, I could take this out, hold that in the vise and get a tap handle and tap the hole, but I could be starting at a slight angle, whichever way. So I'm gonna hold this in the chuck. I'm gonna start up the motor, spinning at a thousand RPM, and then I'm gonna switch off the motor and bring down the tap as it's, it's decelerating in speed, start the hole, and if it goes too fast, I've got the brake. This is the brake so I can stop it if I need to. So we'll see what happens here. So here we go, I'm gonna start the motor, switch it off, and then bring down the tap. Okay, so I didn't have to use the brake and, and the tap is started in line with the drill. It's perfectly in line because nothing has moved. I'll go grab a tap handle and I'll finish off the uh, thread. And I can just wind it down. And I can feel it going through into the bore. So that's it, that's our thread. And then we've got one more operation in the lathe. This is gonna go up against this and you can see how this is obviously larger than this. So what I wanna do, I do have a drawing here that I made a bunch of years ago. Do you see how it, it necks down and, and it's got a nice radius in here? N nice radius. So I have to match this size to this. So what I'll do is I'll switch on my vernier. I'll put that like that. It's just under an inch and a half and I'll zero it. So when I put this in the lathe in the three jaw chuck, when this comes down to zero, it got the same size as this. And then we can work on the ramp. And that's back in the mill. Switching tools. So if I had a CNC, I could I could ramp it down, I could ramp it down, but I don't have a CNC. So what I'm gonna do is a series of little steps. Every 10 degrees I go down five thou. It's gonna be steps the whole way around, and then I take a file and I file it so that it has to match that taper. That's the goal. So, there we go. So that's, that's my zero there, I've just, just touched. So now I go back, I go 10 degrees, and now I wanna go to, I wanna go to five. And then I hit zero. I go another 10 degrees. There we go, look at that. One ramp, mul multiple steps every 10 degrees. How about manual hacksaw? Haven't done manual hacksaw here yet. As you come through, you want to be careful because if it if this piece cuts off, and you wrap your knuckles on there, that's going to hurt. But I stopped at the right time and just break it off. That goes in the scrap bin. I'll just go over to the belt sander now, take off the burrs. the belt sander. One handle. 
This is a inch shaft. It's just cold rolled. It's nothing fancy. So I'm going to measure it and we're going to see what size it is because often these shafts are a little bit undersized. So now if I read the dial, I'm at 998, so it's 0 0.998, it's 2 thou under one inch. And for reference, a human hair is 2 thou, a coarse human hair, I'm told, is 3 thou. So this is 2 thou under an inch. This is a, a telescoping gauge, it's also called a snap gauge. Can you see how it springs? If I do that, it snaps out. So I'll push it in. Lock. This is the lock. I put it inside. I hold it at an angle. Do you see how it's at an angle? And then I lock it and then I move it over center. And that conforms to the exact size. So then I measure it. So I'm at 996. And that's part of the reason why I chose the two because I knew that it was slightly undersized. So I have to hone it out. And the best way to hone it out is this machine over here. We're gonna wander over there. What we have here is a, a sun and hone. It's an old machine. I don't know how old it is, 60, 80 years old, but they work great if they're in good shape. So I can feel a little bit of pressure in there. So I increase. This is in thousandths of an inch. Oh, yeah, see I can, it just slipped in my hands. So I'm taking out a couple thou plus a little bit of a clearance so that it's going to slide over here. That's what I want. So I'm not going to be measuring, but every so often I'm going to see. Okay, see how it's starting to go on now? It's going on just a little bit. I got a, a drill press vise here to hold it because it wasn't working very well with my hands. And now, now we can use the bar and I can increase pressure. So it's going to be much better. We'll see what happens. Perfect. That's a nice fit. So I'm going to leave that one like that and we'll work on the second one. I'm starting on a new piece, so I have to have to back off on the dial a bit. Uh -huh, look at that. Let's try this side. This is the side it goes on. Not bad. That's a pretty nice fit. You can see the marks where the old weld was. So we'll go over to the welding bench now. And we'll just lay a bead down about half inch and that'll never slide off. This is going to go against there. So after I file down, we're going to use machinist blue. This is what it is. It comes in a tube. Well, I have it in a tube. And you put a little smear on one side and then you put the two mating surfaces together and you give it a little bit of rotation. And then that shows you if the blue moves over, it shows you where the high, high points are. So you see what's happening, it, it's taking off all the high spots, like it should. Oh, look at that. So I'm going to use some of this machinist blue. bit on my finger. See, you don't need much at all. It's quite a bit there. See, I just want an even coating. I don't want excess. 
This is kind of like the moment of truth here. So I'm pressing down. Oh, not bad. It's hitting around there and it's hitting around there. Not bad, so that's like 60%. So if I'm going to do a little filing now, I'd file where the blue is and then I'll check it once again. So let's do that. You can spend hours doing this to make it perfect. But the object is not really to, to make it perfect, it's just to just to make it work. So there, we got it around probably 80%, something like that, 85%. So I'm going to say that that's good. So next step is we'll put this in a frame. I still have that Rocky Mountain frame here and we'll put it on the surface table and I'll show you how this gets used. I have a Rocky Mountain frame. It's the one that we fixed the dent on last week. So we're gonna check the alignment between the head tube and the seat tube. So this is, this is how the head tube holding attachment works. So I lock it. And then I pull these apart, and because there's the ramp, that is locked into that head tube. That thing will not move. Then we have a surface table here. We have four blocks. These are just inch by inch, cold rolled. What right here on the seat tube, it's a bulge butt. It, you can, if you take your hand, if I take my hand, I can feel how it spreads a little bit. So we have to be off the butt. We have a decal here we're dealing with. And you can see, I don't even have to look, you, you can look there, you can see the gap. See that? So it's slightly out of alignment. It's no reflection on Rocky, because who knows what happened to this frame. It's been dinged, maybe it's been abused. But that's basically how it works. So if you need to align it, see these here? These are called the hooks. So you put, that goes under the hook like that. And then you put spacer here. I'm just gonna grab one more block. If I put a block under here, if I put a piece of leather, it helps to uh, protect the frame just a little bit. And because the frame is held here, can't move. If I press down, oops. If I press down here, I can put force on the frame. Anytime you align a frame, you have to put force. It's just how you put the force on. That's what makes the difference. So put a little bit of force on there. You can see the frame flexing. And we'll check the alignment once again. So it's out. I just have to put more, more force on there. See, if I need more force, I've got this. So there, I'm definitely putting some force on that. This tube is almost touching the table, almost. Oh, look at that. See that? Tiny little gap there. That's actually perfect because what you want to do when you align a frame, because it's chromoly, it's got memory, if that's straight and the frame's over here, you really want to go a little bit past and then pull it back because then it's going to stay there better. So we're under the hook. I'm going to give it a little bit of pressure. That, that's it. Just You saw how much that was. There you go. It's hitting. There you go. It's hitting right there. There's no gap. So the head tube and the seat tube are now in line with each other. Mission accomplished. Thank you for joining us. Hope to see you next week. Have a great week. Stay safe.